a zombie movie without the zombies. Hmm. You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of Contagion. Watch this. It's transmission, so we just need to know which direction. On day one, there were two people, and then four, and then 16. In three months, it's a billion. That's where we're headed. They're calling out the National Guard. They're moving the president underground. People will panic. Get away! It will tip over. The truth is being kept from the world. Cook your samples, destroy everything. That's right, this sh just got real. You think zombies are scary? How about a real-world incurable plague? And amazingly, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, aka the CDC, actually cooperated with the making of this film. So this isn't just another Hollywood doom and gloom scenario. Instead, now you can see exactly how your tax dollars would be flushed down the drain in Steven Soderbergh's first horror film. And true to form, the movie star Whisperer has lined up another stellar cast. Matt Damon, Kate Winslet, Marion Cotillard, Gwyneth Paltrow, Lawrence Fishburne, Jude Law, and Brian Cranston. Even CNN's Dr. Sanjay Gupta has a cameo. But when Contagion recently premiered at the Venice Film Festival, it was Jennifer L. who walked away with the most buzz. L. is the British actress who first made waves as the female lead in the BBC's 1995 version of Pride and Prejudice. And the male lead was Colin Firth. That miniseries made him an overnight sensation and British heartthrob, but Elle had no such luck. Instead, she spent the last 16 years acting and slowly building a name for herself as one of those highly reliable British thespians Hollywood has come to depend on for supporting roles. In fact, she even had a bit role in Firth's latest grand achievement, The King's Speech, where she played Geoffrey Rush's wife. Will Contagion finally be her breakout role? That would require one of two things to happen. A, that she be nominated for a Best Supporting Actress Oscar, and or B, a lot of people see Contagion. While the first one is certainly possible considering how the Academy loves to thrust long-suffering actors into the spotlight of recognition, the second one is a little more challenging. Will mainstream audiences flock to a highbrow horror film with little to offer in the way of on-screen gore? Warner Brothers is trying to position the film as an event, even putting Contagion on IMAX screens. Is it worth the extra money to see each and every horrifying bubble that foams out of Gwyneth Paltrow's mouth? Let's go find out. How did you like seeing a zombie movie without a zombie in it? It was weird. That's what you were just saying over there. Yeah? It needed, it needed zombies. It needed zombies? It's not really a zombie movie then. Ooh, so what kind of movie would you say it is? I would say it's kind of tame. Um, I think tame? They, it was kind of tame. I think they oh. played down the, the whole aspect. I think that because the last two acts are so good, that the first one just seems a little bit underwhelming. Did it seem under underwhelming when you were watching it? Or only in retrospect? Like in, in retrospect. Ah, okay. It should have started out from day one and not wait until the ending because, and it leaves you in suspense. Like you feel as though you know how the movie gonna end. Yeah. And, but it didn't end how I thought it would end. Oh, so it surprised you. Yeah, oh. yeah. So did it freak you out? Yeah, a little bit. Oh, little bit. scary and informative, and anything could be true in it because it's all about disease and germs, and any virus could wipe us all out. Would you and learn? It would, I the learned food. Well, I learned <laughs> that I, I'm really not going to be shaking too many people's hands, oh, which okay. I don't do now anyway. It keeps you interested. You're like, how the hell did the virus start, or where's the virus going? How are they going to stop it? And all these questions build up, and then little by little, they get released. I think it really had a very realistic situation, and the writing was. Terrific. There should have been a, a lot more to it. There should have been more people looting and rioting. Ah. It wasn't. It wasn't quite realistic enough. A little too cerebral for you, right? No, it wasn't cerebral enough. Oh, really? There's a lot of star power in this movie. Did that make a difference to you? No, not really. No, no. Because right. I see a lot of movies. I want to see what I think might be interesting. So I don't really care who's in it. Okay. Was this it, interesting? It was very interesting. Ooh. No, it it doesn't matter about like a famous star, a famous actor. It just depends on how well the person can act. It made all the difference in the world. The star power was what brought me into the theater. Well, was, who did the best job? It's a toss up between Lawrence Fishburne and Kate Winslet. I like Matt Damon. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, great. What do you give it on a one to ten? I give it like about a seven or eight. Seven. A eight and a half. Eight? I give it like a, a strong nine to a light ten. I give it an eight and wow. a half. Okay, why are you taking points off though? Um, I, you know what, I never give anything a ten. Because I think that everything can be improved. And that's because when I was in graduate school, I had a professor that never gave anybody an A. 
What? Because she said everything can be improved. That's You're why. Like my GPA can be improved too I if you gave well. me an A. Yeah, I know. But that doesn't work like that. <laughs> Sounds like while contagion gets your brain thinking, it doesn't exactly get your blood pumping as audiences give the film overall a solid eight. I'm Grace Randolph reporting from AMC Empire 25, and I hope you'll go beyond the trailer for these other top movies.